A very good day and good morning to all of you in Uthoipua who are attending this wonderful Congress. It's unfortunate that because of the COVID times, we are not able to come uh, personally to do these workshops and show you what the real use of hysteroscopy in low resource settings. So it's my pleasure to be here and thank you for inviting me uh, to this Congress. Today, we'll be talking about hysteroscopy in low resource settings. Now, low resource settings is always not the right word. It just uh, tells us about OPD procedures. But for hysteroscopy, especially operative hysteroscopy, we do need a lot of equipment. So let's see what we can do in both the ways. I hail from uh, the city of Agra, which is situated in North India here, and where the Taj Mahal is. And these are my working places and my hospital. And we do a lot of training online and hands-on training courses for six months, for years in IVF, endoscopy, ultrasound, et cetera. So these are the numbers where you can contact for any training or anything which you want. Now, hysteroscopy is a magic stick. And it's not one magic stick which a gynecologist need. We need two magic sticks, the ultrasound and the hysteroscope. And uh, with these two, we can make the diagnosis and then go ahead and do the treatment. So, especially in infertility, and especially when we are looking at the uterine factors of infertility, which is about 10% to 15%. <coughs> so, when we talk about hysteroscopy, it could be diagnostic or could be operative. Now, doing only a diagnostic hysteroscopy to look into the cavity like this is probably a too invasive a test for doing under anesthesia. So, that is why you need to do it in OPD settings or what we call as low resource setting. And during the diagnostic hysteroscopy, if you find small polyps like this or small adhesions, they can be tackled in the OPD in low resource settings. But if you have foreign bodies, adhesions, biomas, septums, polyps, big polyps, metroplasty, tubal cannulation, then you need a setting of an operation theater. So for an operation theater setting or even for an OPD setting, the proper position is required with the monitors in the correct position. A proper distension media is required for diagnostic we use in cell line or DNS or ringer lactate. And now if you have the bipolar cutting, then you can also do the operative uh, cutting with the normal cell line. Uh, otherwise you need a neutral solution if you're going to use monopolar. So first is the this above video shows that the vagina is filled with the ringolactate solution, which is done in, under pressure or by which we'll show you. And then you identify the intra-vaginal part of the cervix and you go near it with a little bit higher pressure or a very thin scope and the cervical loss, external loss opens up and then you enter and do the complete diagnosis or the operator. So various distension media can be used. We use the neutral distension media for operative with monopolar current and we use the any distension media for diagnostic or if you have a bipolar current. To push the fluid in, it has to be pressure because the uterus is muscular and it is closed. So you need to distend the uterus, then only you can look inside. Gravity is not good enough to distend the uterus. Gravity is good for cystoscopy. So we use these uh, bags which come, Medux bags, which wrap up on the plastic uh, bottle uh, and with a pressure and then you make the with a pump, you make the pressure. Uh, or you use a continuous flow infusion pumps, the roller pumps, or for the best, you use a histromat where the pressure can be controlled. And then you can also use bags like this, warmers and fluid levels, and that is what is required minimum. So even for your low resource settings or OPD settings, a uh, fluid management and warming system is required. Of course, to do any prep, uh, work, we need a good histrogen. And we would, uh, we would recommend Shockey's histrogen because the pressure here can be taken up to high for entry and then reduced. Or of course, the stores and the strikers histrogens are very good enough. But uh, we in our settings find that this uh, type of histrogen, histromat, is very, very effective and very, very good uh, for, and that is how you fit the pipe and in the three liter fluid bottle, and someone has to keep a track that the fluid does not, and it goes uh, with pressure. So rest 
for any hysteroscopy, whether it's low resource, OPD, operative, you need the right telescopes, you need the right light cable, the right light source, a camera, a monitor, some recording devices and distension media systems, which have we shown you, and electrosurgical systems if you want to do operative work. So these are the type of scopes, the four millimeter or the 2.8 and the Betochi scope. And with the Betochi scope, we can put it in a single or a double or even a triple channel uh, uh, methods uh, to use the outflow inflow and the operative. So outflow inflow operative, outflow inflow operative for diagnostic and for operative. And that makes the outer channel a little more thicker, about four or five. Now you remember, four or five millimeters is less than a six millimeter dilator. So you don't have to dilate the cervix by using, or it is even as thin as the sound. Now, if you want to do operative work, then you need operative instruments and an operating channel. So three channel one, inflow, outflow, and the operating channel. And that through the operating channel, you can have screws to pull out the myomas, scissors to cut the base, of pedunculated myomas or adhesions, graspers, tooth graspers to pull out the polyps and things like that, or take, take uh, focal biopsies. If you want to do any advanced work, which cannot be done in low resource setting, which needs a proper operation theater, you need to have a proper resectoscope, which is a TUR, TCR resectoscope with a four millimeter, 30 degrees telescope and the element. Now there are two types of resectoscope. One which the urologists use, where the active element is always outside and comes inside or where the gynecologist when the active element goes out and then comes in and active element could be roller ball roller drum spike roller drum collins knife hooks or loops and these are all used but for doing a proper hysteroscopy you need a good histromat so in a low resource setting which is your opd as mine is here you can see I have an ultrasound machine on one side and I have a bag inflated hysteroscopy with a laptop uh, device like this here with a Johnson Johnson OPD scope. So once I consult the patient, I can pull out my uh, devices which are there on my side and do a scan by ultrasound. As I said, we need two magic sticks to make an ultrasound diagnosis. And then if I'm in doubt, then I put in the Bitochi scope, uh, um, put a little bit of fluid, of course, with proper counseling of the patient because uh, they feel a little bit of discomfort and pain. Indian patients are really very sensitive to pain in the vagina and the uterus. So for them, we need some mild sedation also. And then get a picture and a video on my laptop, which we can record and I can see. Now, these type of scopes are also available, which fit on your uh, mobile phone. And you can do operative work through these types of scopes also. But otherwise, we are doing it with a box like this and connected to a laptop. And that is the box is kept in my side table here uh, for taking out and doing an OPD procedure. But for doing high-end procedures, we, of course, need bipolar underwater cautery. We need a plasma bipolar cautery. We need a hysteroscopic morselator, versa points lasers, disposable operative scopes or hysteroscopes. And here is a laser and that's a laser point which comes in. So you need co complex and bipolar uh, equipment and the scopes could be anything of disposable or uh, reusable scopes. So you do need high-end equipment. Now, before we do any hysteroscopy, a good cavity evaluation needs to be done either by fluoroscopic HSG where you get permanent pictures septum or assurements or by a fluid 3D. And here is a fluid 3D cavity and then you can rotate that cavity and make out. And here is a 2D picture of the cavity which shows a, a septum. And here is a sonohistograph where we have put in some saline and you can see that there is a polyp with a pedicle and this can be easily tackled in the low resource setting in OPD procedures. So these this diagnosis is very, very important. We today depend on transvaginal ultrasound 3D with fluid, with contrast, without contrast. So once you get or make a diagnosis, this was a diagnosis of a single adhesion. You go ahead, this can be cut in low resource setting with only a scissors. 
and in OPD. It's a single and you get a cavity. Then we did a diagnosis of a big polyp. But you see the previous one had a pedicle. This one has a very wide base and you can put color on and see whether it is very vascular or not. So very vascular pedicles, you need to do it in the operation theater and uh, because they might bleed and you might need to cauterize. So those that diagnosis and what can be done in the OPD and low dose setting should, should be uh, very important. Before we do in any hysteroscopy, preparation of cervix is very important. So the patient is told to put vaginal mesoprostol one night prior and in the morning, and then she comes to us. And then we do it, a vaginoscopy, either under anesthesia or without anesthesia, depending on what we are tackling, a major or a minor procedure. And once we fill up the vagina with fluid, you'll be able to see the intravaginal part of the cervix. And if that's the time your pressure is kept high, and if the pressure is high, it is very easy to negotiate the internal and the external loss, external loss. And then you enter the cavity. And in the cavity, we turn towards right and left because it's 30 degree scopes, so it's always looking down with your light cable up and you have to just do right and left and right and left panning. And that is how we a complete hysteroscopy can be done. So see here, So without holding the cervix and then cervix is here. External loss opens up with the pressure and you negotiate the cervical canal. You see the cervical longitudinal gland. Just keep on following them and you reach the internal loss and you reach the cavity. So uh, and this way I'm recording it on my laptop uh, as an OPD procedure. And then you look inside whatever is the pathology you are able to diagnose and you're able to tackle. So if it is a small polyp, small adhesions, ashamens. Now this one had foreign bodies. So this one had bony particles and there were multiple bony particles. Now this is rampant in India still, the mid trimester abortions and where incomplete bony particles are left and it is done after sex determination. And then these patients come to us with these pieces lying which with secondary infertility. And we just have to go ahead and just remove all these pieces carefully. Do a tubal patency at the same time by color Doppler ultrasound in the same sitting, and then she gets pregnant. So these can be one by one slowly taken out by with the grasp. So this is a unique thing which we see: trabeculated bone, long bones uh, in India where they, and that's how we take out the bones. And you of course have must get a history. Now we can also do coronal cannulations for proximal blocks. So we put the Janssen-Anderson cannula, which has got a memory and the stillet through it, uh, which is silicon and try to cannulate the blocks. This side you see foreign body bones, another case, and that side under ultrasound uh, laparoscopic guidance, we have cannulated the full tube with the silicon glide wire, not the guide wire. Guide wire is metal, like metallic. And this had shown a block uh, and that's how easily you can do. And lead to opening of the tube. So this, this can be attempted. Of course, ultrasound diagnosis for all the endometrial pathologies and depending on the pathology, you, you go ahead and do the treatment. Here we put some saline and we saw that there were bridges and it was a single bridge which I showed you how we cut in the first uh, video, which can be done in OPD procedures. Otherwise, if there are many bridges irregular, then they all need to be tackled either by scissors or by current, depending on how thick the bridges is. So there can be various types of ashermans, which we've tried to show you here, and various methods to uh, tackle the ashermans. Mostly we do single, single adhesion cut very easily. Flimsy adhesions cut very easily. Very thick adhesions has to be where the uh, uh, osteo was not seen before, almost half of the cavity. Slowly, slowly we're snipping. And so you have to be careful. Keep the osteo as your guide so that you don't perforate. And what we are doing is in these cases, after doing it, we are injecting PRP uh, into the cut areas. And into, see, see, this osteo is not visible on the side, almost obliterated cavity. And then we've been able to make up the cavity and go ahead and uh, do the complete cavity. So Asherman's operative treatment is very, very effective, but there are some complications which has to be kept in mind. So if you're doing gross Asherman syndrome, grade three, grade four, in the OPD, 
then you might not be able to uh, do it well. So under anesthesia and you need a complete OT. See the complete obliteration of how, and I'm trying to just try to open up the canal slowly, slowly, first the os, and we with the scissors, we just opening the scissors inside that. So we get an opening to go inside and then we will cut all the thicker additions. That, that's, that's how we cut all the thicker additions to get reach to the ostium. So the controversy to use after Ashman was um, what to do, IUCD, balloon inflated for seven, eight days, IUCD and Foley's catheter inflated. And today we are doing what we call as PRP injections and PRP injections for thin endometrium, subendometrially, that's how we do it. So you see, this is a technique which was first described by uh, Dr. Yaya Shaki, Professor Osama Shaki's son from Egypt, and it is now being widely used and practiced by all of us. See the bulge? So the PRP is gone where it should go. If you leave the PRP in the cavity, it is going to come out and not be very effective. So subendometrial Shaki's technique of injecting PRP like that. Beautifully, you can see the bulge and it remains there. In the end, we can leave a Foley's bulb inside. So whatever is leaked out doesn't come out and whacked on the surface. Then if you have anatomical factors of recurrent abortion, septums and uh, subseptate or fully septate, then the diagnosis is made by HSG or, or by ultrasound 3D. And depending on what it is, we will go ahead and cut them either under ultrasound guidance or this one was a very big one. So I did it under the laparoscopic guidance. So there, and I, because it was very big and very thick, so we used a bipolar Collins knife to cut it and keeping the ostia in mind. And very slowly, slowly from one side, going to the other side. For this, cannot be done in low resource setting. For you, you need a bipolar plasma. This is plasma. So you see how the cut is and there's no charring. And slowly you have to go and keep the ostia in view on both the sides. And there was a polyp also we saw here after doing it we will go ahead and remove the polyp. So slowly we are going and proceeding till we reach the ostia, both the ostia at the same. And that, that's what you need to see, see carefully. See the ostia and the ostia on the other side. And then we went ahead and cut this polyp which we see. So I just cut the polyp and you can remove it by a grasper or you can leave it open because the os is already open and it will fall out. But we remove it with the grasper because we want to, want to do the histopathology of, of this. Okay. So septums okay. are cut um, by, the, by the, the... This is the monopolar with glycine, which we are using here. And uh, monopolar Collins knife with glycine. These, these are our older videos. So whatever you have, this can be done alone. Now, we also in India find a lot of T-shaped uterus because of tuberculosis, because of previous... Um, infections, endometritis, myometritis. So very narrow mid-cavity uterus can be taken up for lap lateral metroplasty. And that's how the lateral metroplasty has been done slowly again, not to be done very aggressively. Again, you, you need to go, go through the cervix uh, like a proper hysteroscopy. Make sure that it is narrow. Make sure it is not unicornuate. See the both, even if it is unicornuate, some bit of lateral plasty, can be done to improve the unicornuate cavity also. But these need to be done under operation theater uh, processes with the proper equipment. So cannot be, should not be attempted in low resource setting. For a section so the now myomas, so we have diagnosed a pedunculated myoma or a white pedunculated myoma. Now you go ahead with the loop, cauterize the base with bipolar and then, so the bleeding is the pedicle and then remove it slice wise not to cut the big myoma, otherwise it's a two centimeter myoma, it will not come out. How will you take out a two centimeter through a, not even if you dilate the cervix to two centimeters. So it's sliced rather. Now 3D is helpful for doing a polyp diagnosis where it is. And 3D tells us if it is fibroid polyp or a simple polyp. So that is how accurate 3D is, 3D picture of the polyp an actual removed polyp. So that's how, so we depend a lot on ultrasound for diagnosis. Again, an ultrasound picture, ultrasound picture, then we put saline and then we saw that this polyp is there and removed it with the scissors. Fibroids one, two, three, four, all are attempted. Type four fibroid can be attempted in two sittings or can be attempted in by laparoscopy. Otherwise they are just 
as I told you, with a loop, loop shaved off and not, not completely cut off. We saw bony metaplasias, which I showed you in two. We see a lot of these cases, free bones lying into the, in the cavity from a previous mid trimester abortions acting as a mechanical IUCD and causing infertility. So these have to be carefully removed. You cannot remove them by suction. You have to remove them by grasper. This is a trabeculated bone on this side. This is a trabeculated and a longitudinal bone on the other side. And one by one, we patiently will remove all of them and end up with an empty cavity. At the same sitting, we'll do a sonosalpingography to test the tubes, whether the tubes are. So this is, this is how we see I'm showing you these videos because these are very interesting videos and uh, view probably in the other Western countries will be rarely seen um, uh, such cases, but we see it, them quite frequently, almost once a week, we come across one of these um, trabeculated bones. We, we also showed you the coronal cannulation. This can be again done under ultrasound guidance and also. So we cannulate hysteroscopically and by laparoscopy see the spill or by ultrasound, we can do the color Doppler sonosalpingography. So tubal cannulation also we attempt for cornwall blocks, which come to us with cornwall blocks. And you can manage them quite well with the glide wire, which is Teflon and not the guide wire, which is a metal one, which will perforate. So ladies and gentlemen, that is what hysteroscopy can do. I have tried to briefly show you all the things and some of the things which can be done in low row source setting in your OPD and some of the things, uh, procedures which require a proper OT. But remember, you need to be trained and you need to be trained in laparoscopy also because some magic sticks can go wrong and the whole equipment could fail. You could have a procedure failure, not able to diagnose and you could have complications, complications like bleeding and all. So you should be ready to tackle complications, should be well versed with laparoscopic suturing or should have a friend with you. Overload has to be seen even with using normal saline, you can still have dilution. With glycine and all, the hemodilution much more and hyponatremia occurs or trip syndrome, what we call. But even when you're using saline, you can have hemodilution and the patient could go into overload and chest congestion. Of course, infection, bleeding and proper sterilization, maybe an uh, antibiotic cover or not a cover if you depend on what situation you are working in. So complication rate is very low, but it is there and be ready and be prepared. So thank you very much for inviting me here to this wonderful conference. I am pleased to present what I know about hysteroscopy and I'm always open for any questions either on the WhatsApp, I'll be there or on later on on my email or on my phone. Thank you very much for inviting me to this conference once again.